for you to sit in a classroom in, in rows with your feet planted in front of you and, uh, 60 minutes a day for 175 days a year and make every student endure that is uh, an injustice. What is performance-based education, first of all? Well, perform it's simple. Performance-based education is looking at every individual student and saying, how does that student perform the best? You know, there's four things that are non-negotiable in Telecan School District. One, no kids are held back based upon their chronological age. We have abandoned age-based learning. Two, nobody's uh, allowed to uh, drop out of school. We haven't had a dropout in seven years. We're not allowed to fail kids. Kids are not allowed to fail. Now, how can that be? We're simple, we're not gonna fail them. We're not gonna let a child sit in class, be bored to tears, not do the work. Let them learn the way they learn best. They don't have to sit in a class in, in an environment and be bored or not like the teacher. We'll change that environment to make them successful. Within our model, we have the six spokes. But the six spokes allow you, if you still want to choose traditional, you can. If you still want to hold the, the paper book, you can. But it expands beyond that, to where if you don't like that traditional mode, then it enables you to, to have different options. We went away from the cookie cutter approach, where one size fits all, one education for all, and then we've, t we've literally tailored for all of our 2,600 students, we tailor their education to meet what their specific learning needs are. We have six ways that our kids can learn. And we have six uh, different ways our teachers can teach. It's set up in a wagon wheel, just like our instruction is set up in a wagon wheel. And you can walk around this spoke or this uh, the rim of these spokes. And no matter what grade you're in, if you're in the third grade and you read the fifth grade, you walk down to the fifth grade and you read it to fifth grade. We're not gonna make you sit in third grade and read Jack and Jill ran up the hill. When you can read a novel, you're gonna go read the novel. We did a lot of work this summer to kind of get our units ready. Um, we spent some time creating videos, instructional videos, and when I say we, my team and I work very closely together to do this. Um, we There are four of us that are doing the self-pacing, and so we all work together to create the checklist that we use, to create the instructional videos that we use, the assessments, things like that. Well, I have recorded myself actually teaching each unit or each lesson. The kids watch those on the iPad, and then they have a checklist that they follow. It's just really neat to see some students are able to watch the videos and just, they move at their own pace. Some of them move faster than others. With a the video, they can rewind it and watch it again if they have a question. Um, some students are a little bit more hesitant to raise their hand in class, or it, so this way they can rewatch the videos. And then after they watch the videos, when they do the work pages, they can ask me if they have questions, and I have more time to, to present and, and work with them one on one as opposed to working to the whole with the whole class at the same time. And my kids spend about 45 minutes or so working on their self-pacing checklist. Uh, their self-pacing checklist guides them through their activities for the day. So they're all at different places. Some of the kids might be watching instructional videos. Some of them are um, working on games with a partner. Some of them are doing practice problems out of a book. Some of them are doing independent work. And then when they're finished with that work, they bring it up for me to check. So this year I have several students that are third grade students that are going to be finishing their content, third grade content, before the year's over. So they're actually going to transition into the fourth grade classroom. They're going to have all the fourth grade instruction because all the instructional videos have already been created by the fourth grade math teacher. And this is just a great way to show them and be able to teach them different ways that they can learn and they get to make their own, some of their own decisions as far as how that's going to be and it just, it seems to, to make the learning much more beneficial to them. we used to do a culminating activity at the very end that sort of assessed what the kids knew. Now the project comes at the very beginning and they're given a reason to learn their information. I think that this approach is perfect for the next generation science standards. Back to um, engineering is a great big component of that 
and every project that we do has some form of engineering in it. They are engineering, like I said, when we did the earthquake structures, they were putting together um, straws and duct tape and that type of thing to engineer a structure that would withstand uh, the 7.0 magnitude. I am a facilitator in my classroom. I get them started. Now remember we're dealing with 9 and 10 year olds, but we guide their learning somewhat and I provide the opportunities for them. I help to guide and direct them, but when they're doing that learning on their own, they take that responsibility on, and I have found that they push themselves even harder. First off, the kids are engaged from day one. They are excited, and you can just feel that excitement when you're in there. As we're working, they're, they have a reason to learn, so they're more excited about it. They're using the vocabulary as they're talking to one another, preparing for those presentations. It's more personalized learning because if, if it doesn't work for you in a live classroom, we have options. And I think that's Mr. Cook's vision for our district is to have that, that wheel of learning. We use it with high potential kids, with gifted kids who they can certainly cut it in the regular classroom, but it's, it's just an alternative for them to provide that enrichment during the day, to give them a chance to move at their own pace. Um, and I have students who have completed four, five, six courses. And I have one young man who right now, he's gotten to the point where he's just choosing courses that he's interested in because he's finished all the requirements. So he's getting a chance to take courses that he otherwise wouldn't be able to take if we didn't have Odyssey Wear available. I can be advanced, like right now I'm taking sophomore math. And so I can use to be ahead because back in second grade, whenever um, I was, I only finished one grade, I, math was just too easy for me at that point. Um, I didn't really like that much because I already knew what we were learning, so it was boring for me. Your card takes so many credits, like math, four years. And so um, last year I already did one of my credits, so this year I'm getting another one. And English also, I'm getting a credit right now because I'm taking English one. And then science as well. Um, I'm doing science concepts up at the high school as well. There's basically two different types of freedom, like the freedom of yourself and the freedom of your mind. And I feel like with this type of class, I'm completely free to take my uh, language education the way I want. Last year, I started, I was at the elementary, but I was doing self-paced sixth grade here. I'm reading the book Thief right now, and I've already read the diary of Anne Frank, the play, in the book. Uh, I loved it. I, I love reading anyway, but it was really interesting to put it history kind of in perspective because she was about my age when she went to high school. Being in elementary, they're like, okay, this is the class book and we're gonna read this. And I wouldn't even enjoy the reading because it's, I didn't get to choose. I mean, you still have to read a group book, but you're getting more of a choice in which direction you wanna take it. We have seven periods of virtual every day um, offered at Southern County High School and what we do is um, kids can be put in virtual for a variety of reasons. Um, it can be by choice. They like to um, take classes online. They prefer that um, learning method or it could be they are there for credit recovery or it could also be um, that they're lacking a credit, not necessarily in credit trouble, but just need an extra class to fill their schedule or um, it could have been a conflict of schedule. We have seven periods of virtual every day of, um, offered at Southern County High School. Um, I think it's important that they have their voice as far as whether they want the traditional classroom or they want the self-paced classroom or that they like the online version that we have um, here with Odyssey Wear. To customize, we, um, we've actually taken the math curriculum that Odyssey Wear has and we have actually um, use our curriculum maps that we use in class and so what we do is we match up the Odyssey Wear and our curriculum map so that if a kid was to move in halfway then they should pick up right where the teachers left off in class. As far as the English courses they're lined up and as far as um, science classes with um, our new science teacher in there this year he has recreated the science classes. Our graduation rate is at a hundred percent because we have somebody that says no you cannot drop out. It's not an option. We work with them and get up, get a system, and you know, get them in place where they need to be. Whether it's online or whether they're working and earning credit that way through an internship, 
or through job experience or something like that. We make it work. We, we manipulate their schedule to benefit them and to be able to keep them to graduate. We have 100 kids that come to school every day. They don't even have a teacher. They don't have a teacher assigned to them. They don't really have a schedule assigned to them. That blows our visitors' minds. What do you mean they don't have a teacher? Well, they're, they're academy kids. They can go see a teacher if they want to. In fact, they can go see any teacher they want to. Or they can go all day and never see a teacher. They can go into the virtual academy and use software to accomplish their standards. At the end of the year, they have to have a culminating project, and they all do, and they work on that. But imagine coming to school and not having a teacher, and not having a schedule to follow. But they don't have to go into a classroom and sit an hour. They can go in there and sit five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour if they want to. They get up, they're in charge totally, 100% of how they learn. So for the past six years, going on seven, we've had zero dropouts. Uh, we've had a 100% graduation rate. And I, and I really attribute a lot of that to the, to the amount of options and choices educationally the students has. There really is a fit educational-wise, there's, there's a fit style-wise for every student. When you release the control over to the students and you see them latch onto it and they're empowered with that I'm empowered, I'm um, responsible for my own learning. It is just, it, it makes you so happy as a teacher to see that. Like you don't even worry about, am I in control, am I not in control? You start looking for ways to give those students more control over even more things in class. I didn't have to constantly worry about how am I going to differentiate? How am I going to take care of this discipline problem? Or how am I going to take care of As this student? As a teacher ahead? wanting to make sure that every single child in that classroom gets it, uh, being stuck up front and teaching a one-size-fits-all lesson, it was very frustrating. Um, so, I felt so like I knew every single one of my kids on a personal level where exactly they were in math, and I could never have said that before. I thought I knew my kids before, and I had no clue compared to how I really could know them before.